Thank you, Milton. Can everybody hear me okay? Great. Well, as, as he has uh, explained, my name is Leo Lejeune. I'm with Stantec, and I have been working on the CAT building uh, for six years, if you can believe. There was a brief period of time where it was on hold for two years, and I'll explain a bit of that project history in a moment. Could I get a quick show of hands? We've done a number of town halls and world cafes over the last year, year and a half. Can I see a show of hands of people that have seen uh, material and images and presentations like this before? Okay, so about half of you. Great, thank you. Well, hopefully we'll keep it exciting and not repetitive for those of you that have seen it before. So over the course of our half an hour together uh, in this presentation, we'll cover the purpose of the building, a bit of the background and how it came to be, share the highlights of the building in particular, and then at the tail end of the presentation, we'll zero in on some of the features of the office areas. And we'll open it up through Milton for question and answers at the end. So the purpose of the building began back in 2008. Nate was responding to space pressures on the campus, and in particular looking to increase the overall FLE, or full load equivalent of student enrollment. Looking in particular to bring 1,700 new student bodies to the campus. Um, beyond providing additional space for these students, the Nate campus community was looking at improving the student experience and this includes both indoor and outdoor space, and we'll get into that in a moment. And lastly, there was an opportunity here with a brand new building to bring a number of schools together all under one roof and create a truly interdisciplinary facility where classrooms, labs, and offices existed all under one roof for the three schools. Looking at the background of how this came to be, I mentioned that I've been on it for six years. And the genesis of this began with a business case back in 2008 that Nate pitched to the province of Alberta. That then led to what we call in architecture circles schematic design, or the beginning of conceptual design in January of 2009. From January 2009 through to May of 2011, we did a full design of the building. Um, and it had a slightly different look to the exterior, which you'll see in a moment. At that point in time, May, spring of 2011, Nate had enough funds to fund the design of the building, but not fund the construction of the building. So they were waiting uh, for the province of Alberta to come forward with construction monies. In that time, though, there was a, a high degree of change here within the executive team at Nate. A new president came on board and, a, and some new vice presidents on the team. This was in 2011 and 2012. At that time, coinciding perfectly, was the closure of the city center airport. And that led to a very critical moment in Nate's history where they could take advantage of land coming available on the city center airport uh, to allow for future growth for the campus. So a business case was conducted for what growth could look like for Nate. And that became part of a master plan of how Nate would grow onto those Blatchford or city center airport lands. That work culminated in 2012. One component of that work was to generate some architectural design guidelines of what new buildings should look like over the next 30 years for a big and better and newer expanded Nate campus. Lo and behold, in 2013, spring of 2013, the province awarded uh, $200 million of construction money to Nate to build the CAT building. At that point in time, it was uh, appropriate, I'll say, uh, given the change in the master plan and the change in the architectural design guidelines for what new buildings should look like, to revisit the old design that had been finished in 2011. And I'll try to share some of those highlights with you in a moment. But first, let's start with where the building is located. It's on 118th Avenue and 106th Street. No surprise, everybody sees it going up under construction as we speak. It's over halfway through its three-year construction cycle. Um, it will be connected via pedways. Um, can everybody see the mouse here on the screen? So shown in yellow is the CAT building. There will be a pedway over an outdoor quad connecting it to the HP Center. There will be another pedway connecting it to the existing parkade over here on the east. And in the future, not part of this construction project, but in the future, there will be a third pedway over 106th Street tying it to the U building. So effectively, there will be a loop of circulation, pedestrian circulation on the second floor 
that students and staff can actually stay indoors if they want all, all year long. In 2011, the former administration was looking for a building that was very traditional, and neo-Gothic was the, the term, the architectural um, style that this was drawn up in. Here's what that building looked like at the time with a large landscaped quad um, on the south side of the building. And the same building as seen from a different perspective. This was really the front door and a, that pedway over to the HP Center. This image is taken as though you're standing right outside uh, Glenn Feldham's office in building O, uh, looking across the quad. So as you can see, it was quite traditional looking. Um, three stories on the west end of the building and up to five stories on the far east side of the building. I mentioned that as part of the master plan, some architectural design guidelines were authored. Now this wasn't just by us, this was a broad consultation uh, with staff and students across the Nate community having input. And there was lots of discussion and brainstorming and through that round of consultation, we learned lo and behold that loud and clear that the Nate campus community didn't really want traditional looking um, or backward focused uh, um, architectural styling, but instead wanted something that befitted an, a polytechnic that was modern and forward focused. So we, we took the 2011 design and revised its exterior appearance uh, with more modern materials and more modern uh, detailing. So same building, two story glass curve on the corner of 106th Street, three story student commons, front door here, with a tall atrium and then a five-story mass on the east. And then over here you can see the long pedway over to the HP Center. This really isn't a surprise anymore because the building is already pretty much looking like this. Um, another glance from 118th Avenue again. This is the five-story side of the building and you can see this tall glass element. This is called uh, the atrium in the middle. We're, we've coined it Main Street because it's the center spine of circulation for students and staff to flow east and west through the building. So I've talked about the changes to the exterior look, but there were some other changes that I will highlight that occurred between 2011 and today. Um, one of the most important features was that the old scheme had a suite for the president and the executive team. And the new administration felt that this new building uh, was best fitting student use, and so gave up that office space in favor of increased uh, student lounge, student study, and student gathering space. That's on level two, and I'll show you that in a moment. Another element was to improve the food services in the building. The old scheme had only one tiny little coffee provider for the whole building, if you can believe. Up to 5,000 people living in it uh, at any given moment. So one coffee kiosk was simply not enough. So the, with the refresh was an opportunity to think about those food services on the main floor and now we have a full food court with a variety of sizes of food kiosks, uh, four in particular on the main floor. We still have the old coffee shop uh, but then in addition we have two other uh, vendors on the second floor. So there's quite a variety for staff and students to choose from now. Another key change that occurred was the distribution of class sizes that are 32 and 64 seats. We always had both of those style of uh, seating environments in the old scheme, just the distribution and the number of 32 and the number of 64s have uh, been slightly rearranged. Total student count and total seat count remains the same. Um, there had been a wastewater treatment plant in the basement of the old design. It was quite cool, I'll say. It was uh, a, a living, breathing lab where students were learning and actually treating the wastewater of the building and it was recycling its way through a purple pipe system uh, through the building. Uh, it was gonna be one of a kind. Still a great concept, but with the Blatchford Initiative and the city center airport lands coming, there was a much bigger and more ambitious uh, sustainability agenda coming that would impact Nate. So in the 2015 scheme, it was felt that let's not isolate such a singular thing in this building and wait for a larger initiative for the whole campus. And then lastly, um, we took a whole fresh new look at how the offices could be treated and that'll be at the end of the presentation. So who are the tenants in the building? We've got uh, 
I said earlier, a variety of classrooms, labs, and offices. Um, for the labs, again, we have lab space for all three schools. We have the School of SSBEM, the School of Health Sciences, and the Shaw School of Business. Um, and then, of course, we have amenity spaces. These include the student gathering spaces, uh, food services that I've already outlined, and then the large landscaped outdoor quad. This outdoor quad is on the south side of the building. Um, it will hopefully one day, as part of the master plan, be part of a larger initiative of a green belt that connects the campus all the way from the far east through to the Blatchford lands on the far west. But for right now, we can only deal with the, the one construction project at a time. We are creating this uh, beautiful front lawn. Um, and this will be a place back to the mandate of improving the student experience. This will be a place where staff and students can throw a frisbee, have a barbecue, have a, a student career day, um, just relax in the sun with their lunch or studying with their friends. This is again what it could look like in a, uh, this is an artistic conception much earlier in the, in the process. It's been tweaked, but you get the idea. I'll take you now through the six floor plans of the building uh, to orient you. This is the basement. The bottom half of the basement or south half shown here in purple is the underground heated parking and this is accessed off of 103rd Street down into the ramp and into the parkade. The north half of the building identified in blue, these are labs mostly affiliated with SSBEM. And I will point out here, these four X's, these are the elevators that take you up through all floors of the building. Coming on to the main floor or ground level floor plan, I mentioned earlier that the main street is the big organizing element of the whole project. This identified here in yellow, that east-west corridor, that's for pedestrians to flow back and, back, pardon me, back and forth through the building, east to west. Um, and it's also connected to a large atrium-like environment here called Student Commons. This is two and a half to three stories tall. And this is where informal and formal student gatherings can be held. Directly beside it in orange is the largest lecture theater in the building, 135 seats. It's the most formal with the tiered seating. Throughout all of the floor plans identified in orange are classrooms. Again, some are 32 seat size and some are 64 seat size. Directly adjacent to what we're calling the front door off the quad is this student contact center in blue. This is like one-stop shopping for newcomers to the campus where they can deal with their uh, registration needs, uh, pay for services, deal with parking, etc. Around the corner in the purple, this is that new food court with the four gray food kiosks um, of variety of, of food servicings and selection for students. On the top north end of the building in green, this is all labs affiliated with health sciences, and in particular, a state-of-the-art simulation center along 106th Street here. Uh, this is where simulations uh, can be made of uh, health practitioner environments for the students. Second floor is almost all classrooms, and this is quite deliberately by design so that students can move from other parts of the campus through pedways and get to their class quickly. Um, you see Main Street has these yellow bridges flying through. They're not actually colored yellow in the real design, but they're identified in yellow on the floor plan for your benefit. And then there are a series of staircases that connect you up to other bridges and other floors. Over here at the Student Commons, this is a big opening down to the main floor and the front entrance below. Here in purple or pink called student space, this had been the executive suite in the 2011 design. This was where uh, Dr. Sam Shaw's office was and some of the vice presidents. Now this is all uh, open for student uh, gathering and student study areas with a variety of seating types. One last thing I might point out here again are the pedway connections. We have a future pedway connection across 106th Street in the northwest a pedway over to the HP Center on the south, and a pedway over to the parkade on the east. So there will be a lot of student and staff traffic on this second floor. Third floor, the north half shown in orange, these are office spaces for the Shaw School of Business. 
And the south half of the building shown in blue, these are the studios for SSBEM, architecture, interior design, etc. And you can see the, these bridges that fly through the atrium continue um, in slightly different locations on every floor to add kind of visual interest and make the atrium uh, kind of an exciting volume. Oh, I'll go back and just point out also here on the third floor, um, we've been creating a series of meeting rooms that are open for everyone in the building to take advantage of. And there's a variety of sizes. Some of the meeting rooms are as small as four people and some of the meeting rooms go as high as 24 people. And the, the ambition is that these will be centrally scheduled electronically. So if you're a staff person in the building, you can book it from your desk and know that it's available and, and show up on time with your colleagues. I can't speak for the IT side of how that's gonna work, but that's why you've got this lovely core team looking after you. Uh, the fourth floor, the north half of the building, you see in orange some of these 64 seat classrooms, in yellow, the hallways around the perimeter. Here in purple, something new in, 20, in the 2015 design, this is a non-denominational prayer room. This is new. Um, this is um, also has um, gender neutral washrooms directly adjacent to it for anybody that needs to use ablution stations for their prayer and worship. Uh, we have two student lounges here shown in pink, purple, not sure how it's reading on your screen. Uh, these front the glass rail of the atrium so that all of the uh, hustle and bustle of circulation up the atrium, students can find their way to these lounges either to do group work with friends or do singular heads down work in a more quiet environment than they would find on the main floor. And the last thing on this floor to point out, shown in pink at the south half of the building, this is an office area and it's simply called swing space right now. I think it's 16 different groups. I should know this, but there's people moving from all over the campus into the CAT building. They're gonna leave vacant space behind. There will be renovations to all 16 of those areas. And as those renovations uh, take shape over the next uh, three to five years, people will need a temporary home to live uh, for their office space. So um, Nate is just simply holding this area as that temporary home or temporary swing space for people in transition. The fifth floor, top floor, on the north half of the building in the green and pink, this is uh, for the School of Health Sciences, their office space. Identified in brown are the shared meeting rooms that anybody in the building can use. And the south half of the building, shown in blue, these are the office environments for uh, SSBEM. Again, deliberately keeping the office areas at the top of the building because students don't need to go up there as much as they do need to go to classrooms. So the, the requirement for a bunch of students standing around an elevator or standing around a stair at class change time uh, is reduced. So here's a cross section, a slice through the building. This is taken through that east-west main street, that central uh, six-story atrium. You can see the glass on the ends and the glass at the top flooding that space in daylight, bringing tons of daylight down into the middle of the building. And then that series of cascading staircases and bridges that connect uh, the two halves of the building with one another. So it's six stories here for the atrium, five stories of floor space, it drops down to three stories um, on the west end and then the far west end along 106th Street, it's two stories. This is a glimpse of what that main street could look like or will look like. We've got glass bridges, not glass on the floor, just glass on the guardrails. <laughs> I think people would freak out if it was on the floor. Um, and then you can see in the distance, we've got this uh, tall six stories of glass bringing tons of daylight in, uh, we hope it's a pretty exciting space. Uh, and the idea would be that uh, career fairs and, and a, a number of student activities can occur down this main street over the course of the year. Right, directly beside the front door as you come in off the quad is the space called the Student Contact Center. Again, this is that one-stop shopping where there are a number of staff attendants uh, looking after students as they come in, pay for their parking, register for their courses, etc. Further down the hallway is the entrance to the food court. And you can see the glimpses of color in behind. I will say that the color scheme for the building, we've been deliberately neutral with the majority of the finishes and surfaces 
both outside and in, but then having very bold hits of color uh, to liven it up and remind people that this is really about students. So here's an example of these bold hits of color drawing you into the food court deeper inside. And here's a glimpse of that same food court. A uh, number of food service providers, four of them on the right hand side. A number of different seating environments. Some at bar height, some at uh, table height, and then some as banquettes. These banquettes will be directly adjacent to these large windows and doors that take you directly out to the quad. So the idea here being you can go in, grab a lunch, op walk through these doors and sit out on the quad on a nice summer day or winter day, whatever suits your preference. Um, one little special feature in the building, it's called the glass box. It's right at the center of, of activity. It's up on the second floor here. You can see it kind of lifted above this front entrance. It's directly on axis of Main Street, but also on the axis of the front doors. So we felt it was really the last thing that's been designed within the last six months or so. Um, and we're calling it the glass box, uh, maybe for lack of a better word or maybe affectionately, but it suits it because it's intended to be completely transparent and completely multifunctional. It can function for students. In this case, a student career day, all the furniture is cleared out and you can, the students can actually use it for anything they wish and right on the surface of the glass. But it could also function for a, a wine and cheese event. Again, the same uh, furniture is cleared out and it is maybe where a retirement celebration for a colleague is held in the evening. We've got a wooden ceiling hung in the middle and then glass walls around all sides. This glass is intended to be frosted with the touch of a button uh, to allow privacy for patrons inside. So standing here inside that glass box room, again, you see the wooden slat ceiling. The wooden slat ceiling is kind of a theme throughout the whole building. Um, and then the glass, frosted glass walls around the perimeter to give a little bit of privacy if you're using it in meeting room mode. And here, um, the idea that a projection screen can roll down and you can use it as an actual meeting room. This is that same glass box as seen from one of the bridges down Main Street. You can see it kind of glowing, it's lit, where LED technology has come so far and fast in the last few years, we're really playing it up in this project and in particular in this room, uh, trying to light the frosted glass. And it's all being technically detailed as we speak, so this is what we want it to become and you'll just have to come on opening day and see how successful it, it came. But the idea with the uh, LED lighting is you can also play with the color. So this could be a real jewel or feature at the center of the building. Directly beside that glass box is the uh, student gathering area that again had previously been dedicated for the executive suite. Here we've got the wooden slats that come down and kind of define different seating areas. Where both for staff and students, it's really important to provide a broad range of choices. So the students have choices to study in groups, to study singularly, to study noisy, to study quiet. The, the same the way they eat and the office staff have their own choices that I'll share with you in a moment. But sticking with the students you'll see here, some of the, some of the tables are deliberately at uh, bar stool height and this is more for casual stumbling by and, and meeting a colleague. Um, we've also got more quiet, focused banquettes tucked around the corner. And then also around the corner along 106th Street, just wide open tables. So students can actually gang the tables together. They're loosely furnished and do group assignments if they need to. This is that same space, but seen from around the corner. Again, we have banquettes for quite a bit more quiet work or just simply having your lunch with your friends. As you move up through the building, this would be where the student environments can get a little bit quieter than they would be down on the, on the uh, first and second floor. And again, a variety. We've got the Starbucks cushy style living room furniture, but we've also got the tall uh, group work uh, bar stool tables. Now, taking a look at classrooms, this was a slight, slight tweak we did in 2015. Uh, to announce entrances to classrooms. Not every single classroom gets this treatment, but there was room to add it as hits of color um, 
on all of the floors. So we've got lockers down the hallways and where we don't have lockers, we've, we've chosen to build this little bench seat. Uh, right now, as you move through the campus, be no surprise you would see students sitting on the floor at class change time waiting for their class, the previous class to get released. Um, this is just a way to get them off the floor or where they could actually sit and wait for their instructor to meet after class. We've also, um, this is also a bit of a branding opportunity for Nate's marketing shop uh, to promote activities or achievements that the community is, is doing uh, routinely throughout the year. I mentioned the idea of hits of color. We have very, very long corridors. You could see in this little key plan in the top left. In yellow, this would be one very long corridor. So we felt the need to break it up a little bit where it meets another or where it's an intersection with another hallway. Just a little bit of hit of color in the ceiling plane. Hits of color at the benches and another alcove, uh, or pardon me, ceiling treatment at another intersection with a hallway. So what does it look like inside the classroom? Um, there have been a number of sessions, I believe, that, that your core team has been hosting for what the classroom furniture could look like. This is all being developed as we speak uh, and soliciting staff and student input on preferences for chairs and tables. But a 32-seat classroom is shown here on the left, the idea being that the chairs and tables are movable, but there is a power rail at hip height all the way around the room for students to plug in their laptops while they're in class. That, we heard that loud and clear. And then the instructor uh, station is up at the front of the room, all with smart technology. As seen here on the right, there's a bit of an artist's rendition of what that space could look like with the projection image on the screen. This happens to be a 64-seat classroom. The large 135-seat tiered lecture theater on the main floor, a little, little more formal finishes. And I'll just take the last few minutes to share some of the highlights of the office areas for, it sounds like when Milton asked about half of this group is moving in, is that correct? So um, in, the, in the redesign or the refresh, we tried to create even more choices for staff as they use their office throughout the day. Um, we also have felt quite strongly that we're trying to promote collaboration back to the ambition that this is a multidisciplinary building if we're going to have three schools all sharing one roof, let's actually promote places that they can collide with one another and learn uh, from one another. Creation of spaces that are both team-oriented and individual-oriented. Technology, anybody moving into a new office space would, of course, expect the latest and greatest. More info on that yet to come. And then lastly, promoting health and wellness uh, for staff that are in those office environments. So here's a typical floor. Uh, this is, in this particular case, this is the third floor for the School of Business. Uh, there have been some swipe, slight tweaks to the reception area, so um, I apologize that this portion of the drawing is already out of date or obsolete, but that's the nature of design. Things are always moving. Um, but I will point out kind of how this, this floor plate works. Along the bottom of the slide, you'll see this uh, six-story atrium, and it's got bridges that fly through. Identified in the four X's, these are the elevators. So there's this elevator lobby. From that elevator lobby, staff can work their way through uh, a set of doors into their actual office space. The intent behind having open workstations around the perimeter and closed offices down the middle is deliberately by design, uh, both for sustainability principles, but also for health and wellness so that everybody has access to the same daylight. In the middle of the floor plate here, we've got the cafe or kitchen area. This is, again, going to have a variety of seating types, but it'll also have the counter, the microwave, the fridges, um, a water fill station. And then where we have the closed offices, we also have identified here in the turquoise a number of breakout rooms. And these are for everyone on the office floor to share. So throughout your day, you may find you've got need for a quick discussion with a colleague and you don't want to disrupt those around you, or maybe you just want some heads down space to do instruct, uh, marking of your papers. You can uh, simply slip away into one of these breakout rooms. And there, there will be a variety of furnishing types for these breakout rooms to promote a diverse use of the office floor throughout the day. 
Here's that uh, artist conception of the kitchen cafe area. Again, all about choices. Um, bar stools at like the kitchen area. Cushy living room furniture to sit and have a coffee or sit and have your lunch. And then uh, bench seating with tables uh, just to visit with your colleagues. I, I should point out in the world cafes that we, or pardon me, the town halls that we held a year and a half ago, we heard loud and clear that the staff did not want these areas to be open to the students. They wanted to have some sense of security, uh, that they could have their lunch in privacy and that nobody would be stealing their lunch out of the fridge. So this area is indeed secure um, from the public area of the floor. Level five is almost a, a replica of what I just went through on level three. Um, so we've got access coming off the elevators, the kitchen uh, staff area in the middle, closed offices in the middle and photocopy rooms, and then open workstations all the way around the outside with views um, both to downtown Edmonton and to the north. Level five uh, on the south side, same all the same principles. This is the School of SS BEM coming off the atrium, coming off the bridge. Uh, you come past a reception point and deep into the building or deeper into the floor plate, you have the kitchen staff area and then open workstations around the perimeter. You may have heard of the concept of neighborhoods being developed by the core team. What this is intended to do is kind of promote uh, a sense of community within these large floor plates. We recognize that each of the three schools, within each school, there are a number of departments, and those departments are likely going to be co-located near one another. Makes sense. So in this particular case, zeroing in on a neighborhood, um, there are opportunities to co-locate these groups all the way on each side of the floor. If you zero in on one of these neighborhoods, and there's, there's gonna be more input and feedback that you can give your core team about how these take shape. Um, here in particular would be a pod of six open workstations, and you might have one desk in that pod of six workstations. So this might be your group that you're used to dealing with right now, every day of the year. What does a day in the new CAP building look like then? So uh, you might arrive at the elevators or up the uh, cascading staircases first thing in the morning from the elevators hopefully you say hi to whoever's sitting at reception on your way in you pass your way through the kitchen and drop off your lunch at the fridge grab a coffee and head over to your desk from there you get, you'll have somewhere where you can store your purse and shoes and winter coat um, you might need to print off some materials to take to a class that you're teaching so there are two dedicated copy rooms, one on this side of the building and another on the other side of the building identified in the lime green. Following that, you might have a staff meeting. So maybe your whole group uh, comes together in one of the large uh, centrally booked 24 seat meeting rooms. And from there, maybe something controversial came up and you have to go running to the Dean's office to talk to them. <clears throat> um, following that, maybe you do have found that you do want some head, heads down time to focus on your work in a closed environment. So you can just slip into one of these uh, breakout rooms uh, for as long as you wish and get your individual work done. From there, you might need a coffee break, go sit back in the uh, cafe area at the middle of the floor plate, grab a coffee, hit the washroom. Um, then a student may come to see you because they wanna talk about how they did on their exam. So right near reception, by design, we have a series of breakout rooms. These breakout rooms are more public. These ones are where the student may come to reception and say, I need to speak to instructor so-and-so. You're paged from your desk, you go greet them at reception, and you slip into one of these breakout rooms. That breakout room will be housed with all the same technology, we, we hope, that's the ambition, that you would have at your desk. So you can pull up on the uh, projection TV in the room, you might need to pull up that student's assignment or you might, might need to pull up something off of your own drives. Uh, that would all be accessible through IT there. And lastly, at the end of the day, you leave hopefully via the elevator or the stairs and that covers off a day in the life of staff in the new CAT building. 
taking a look at what those office environments could look like. And these are artistic renderings of what they could look like. They're all being shaped and designed as we speak. Furniture selections have not been made. Um, you will hear more from the core team about that and how you can have input. But from our purposes to get the conversation rolling, um, we have generated these images where we have, in this particular case, a group of six pods, open workstations, where we have lower panel heights between two colleagues within one department, a slightly higher privacy panel between you and the person beside you, and then down the corridor, a third and final higher height just to create some visual and acoustic privacy for the people that are moving back and forth along the hallway. We're, in, we're hoping and intending that these would be glass so that the daylight can stream in from these windows on the left all the way across the desks and into the closed offices beyond. So when we talked about neighborhoods, we talked about how to create a sense of community, a sense of identity. Uh, we're looking at ways of how uh, branding and self-expression can be applied to these open workstations. So here having some fun at the, sh at the Shaw School of Business's expense or maybe uh, in honor of them uh, showing bar charts and, and, and graphs. This is a vinyl application that can be applied to the glass that gives a bit of visual privacy but also uh, maybe some self-expression. Another opportunity might be through the use of color on the furniture. Again, this furniture has not been selected, nor have these colors, but we're just playing with it right now. And also toying with the idea of color on the glass. Zeroing in a little bit closer on one workstation, same idea, three panel heights, a low panel height between two colleagues, a slightly higher panel height to the other side of the pod, and then a third height along the hallway you can see through this glass into one of the breakout rooms on the end where there's a number of people standing and having a staff meeting. Again, playing with graphics on the glass. These are all just ideas right now. Playing with color on the workstations and playing with color on the glass. And please feel free to uh, communicate your interests in this uh, through to the core team. And with that, I'll call it a wrap on the presentation of Cap Building. Thanks for your time.